Today I'm going to be talking to Linda Norman, a watercolorist in Kelowna, worth your time and attention. So Linda, how do you know when a painting is finished? That's, um, it depends on the painting, obviously, yep. but um, the, the way I've developed my techniques is pretty dependent on the rest of my schedule. Oh, uh, right. I, I you yeah, know, have... Being a mom and a grandma. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of things, of things going yep. on in my life, and so studio time is sometimes little snippets here and there. Right. So the processes that I've dealt with um, so far have been just quick and, and simple. Um, yeah. I very seldom will go back to a painting, so oh. um, I will, it's usually one and done. And with watercolor, that's that's pretty important right. for the most part because once you start adding more, where there's water, things will change, and, yeah. and sometimes that's a little bit challenging to, to control. Yeah. Um, especially on a canvas. Oh, no kidding. Because yes, the flow is there, and if I added something else later, that flow would be interrupted. Yeah. So, uh, but on a painting on paper, I could come back to it. Even just for highlights, perhaps, or so, yes. finishing touches. Yeah, yeah, for highlights, I can go back. I've started some on some paintings using a little spatter with some gouache, which right. is an opaque watercolor, yeah. basically. And I will go back in maybe and, and fine tune uh, a bit of a shoreline by by removing, right. because until the painting is sealed, you can remove the watercolors right. from your surface. Yeah. Uh, most paints will come back, or most pigments will come back. Some are staining and, and will be more right. difficult. And again, that's that's through experimentation and figuring that out. Yeah. I have, a, you know, a certain set of colors that I gravitate to, yeah. and I know what they will do for me. So, yeah. um, but very often I will I will get a painting to a point where um, I think I've got all the elements there. Mm -hmm. I'll stop. I'll take a photo of it. I'll leave the studio. Go make a cup of tea or prepare supper or, uh, or give, you know give some fresh eyes give it some time and then yeah. sit down away from the studio still look at that photo mm, okay, and that yeah. will show me yeah. you know if, if I need more elements yeah. does that look out of place do I need to add a bit more shadow do I uh, need to throw yeah. in some more tree branches so or occasionally you are or sort of more often than not that's pretty much what I do with everyone okay Good. And yeah, if I'm happy with it, story. after I've sat away from it for a bit, yeah. then it's done. Yeah. And I quickly will sign it. I will seal it. I, I seal all my watercolors. Yeah. Um, it's probably not necessary. Daniel Smith paints, as I said, the ones that I use are, are light fast. Yeah. They shouldn't fade, but I, you know, especially when I'm uh, selling paintings to, pe to yeah. people, I don't want them to have any issues. So yeah. I always put a, a, a UV protectant seal on them. That's and, terrific, yeah. and then if I bring them to you, then you, if they're on paper, you will put the uh, UV protectant glass yeah, I in a frame. Yeah, UV protective, mm -hmm. um, glare reduced, so may bring out the best of a picture. And yeah, and that's... A, like I said, you, you know, your mediums and your... Uh, and your cotton rag and things like that. These are, are pretty solid uh, things um, that aren't as susceptible to, you know, fading and discoloring, like other mediums, like other papers, like uh, you know. Yes, yeah, some so some uh, some mediums are, are medium, right, yeah. you know, that's a big concern. Um, so when I'm when I'm teaching a workshop or advising anybody on watercolor, I always. Uh, recommend you buy the best you can afford. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yes, and any painter I know that's, you know, active, active, you know, very busy, they're a stickler for getting the highest quality, and I totally understand that now. Because I've done, you know, dabbled with painting in years past. Yep. I've got a, an abstract downstairs that over, oh, 25 years, uh, there's colors that are gone from it because they're cheap acrylics and somehow the yellows in this, in this one piece are just like, where'd they go? Right. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's yeah. a huge concern. And if you're putting the effort into it, yeah. you know, and, and I mean, a, lo a lot of mis mistakes are, are beautiful paintings in the end. Yeah. You know, and, and like so... Like you said, stepping back, a photograph of it allows so you, yeah. another part of your brain to, to witness it and to assess it. Right, so you never know when a painting is going to, um, you know, come forward and, yeah. and if you if you used, um, well, and you won't get the results. Mm -hmm. You just won't get the results. Uh, painting on a cellulose-based paper, uh, which is 
most student grade papers that you can buy in craft stores and yes. and even in the art stores and online um, if you don't specify 100% cotton you're going to get a cellulose paper right and it doesn't have the same absorption that's right so, so it your results responds very differently to absolutely. your painting absolutely so the, the amount of water you use versus pigment changes yeah. the the type of brush you want to use will change uh, because you won't get the same effect uh, typically 100% cotton paper comes in various finishes as well. Oh yes. Right. So there's hot press and cold press. Yeah. Hot press uh, more of a smooth finish. Sounds for like olive oil. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Some's tastier than others, yeah. right? And so the hot press is a smooth finish for people who want to do more detailed painting perhaps, right. you know, an animal or a, or a portrait or, or something that has um, a lot more finer fine lines, fine lines and that kind of thing. Whereas the hot press, which is what I prefer to use because my paintings are, are more loose and open, yeah. um, the hot press, and, and I try to get as rough as possible. Right. So there's there's fine grain and, uh, and rough grain. So there's lots of different, yeah. you know, it becomes... Texture and depth. And yeah, and I think any kind of painting, as, as you progress into it, uh, becomes almost a little scientific in some ways, yeah. right? Yeah, well, yeah. You know, so You're a bit of a uh, chemist as well. Yeah, <laughs> without realizing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you talk about the... Uh, um, cotton rag paper and I, I understand the exquisite uh, nature of that uh, mm -hmm. for artists and in picture framing too it really was the norm when I started in the 90s uh, cotton rag was more affordable mm -hmm. and it was the standard for the matting process because it's really beautiful it's got it just got some very subtle unique beauty to it yeah. and very protective of artwork Nowadays, I'm mostly using a cellulose, uh, you know, which is treated to be safe for artwork. Acid-free. Acid-free. <clears throat> so it's, um, and it looks good, but, you know, I know that I'm, when I'm working up it up, uh, working with it up close and cutting it, I know, I feel the difference. Yeah. It's, a, it's an entirely different fiber, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for staying with us for this marvelous encounter with Linda Norman. If you want to know more, you can subscribe to this channel and, of course, check out my website, artframer.net.